What's up, everybody? It's Goomer22. This is take number three. So you've joined a non-Dynamax VGC Draft League. Um, and you haven't played in one before. Or maybe you have, like me. Um, and I'm going to go through all of the things that are different in non-Dynamax. So I, I started playing in Sword and Shield. Um, and I, so I've, I've only played really in Dynamax. And last uh, draft league season, I played in a non-Dynamax league. I think I learned a lot. Um, I have won a VGC uh, draft league before, um, and yeah, I think I've I think I've got some interesting insight here. These are just some things I'm thinking about. Some stuff I've seen in action. Some stuff is just kind of theory. But I'm going to go through. A bunch of different features uh, that I think are different in a non-Dynamax draft league uh, for VGC versus a Dynamax league. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, and uh, if there's anything I missed or anything you guys think are interesting, just feel free to uh, throw it in the comments. I'll respond to anything. So uh, yeah. All right. So the first thing. Uh, I want to talk about is abilities that don't work when you're Dynamaxed. Um, I think I covered most of them here, but uh, there are um, some abilities that give either move boosts or do certain things and they don't really work uh, when you're Dynamaxed. So one is Unseen Fists, uh, Urshifu. We know Urshifu is super strong without Dynamax. It, it never really likes to Dynamax. Um, it can hit through Protect and uh, its G-Max move can hit through Max Guard, but um, that's only its G-Max move. And so outside of Max, Urshifu is just so, so strong. Um, you know, it, 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 if it's not maxed, it can't hit through Max Guard. But since nothing can max in a non-max league, you know, it, it can just smack everything uh, really, really hard. And you can't really protect against it. So that's really cool. Um, next up, we got Strong Jaw. So Pokemon like Dracovich or Bolton. Um, you get a 50% boost. I mean, it's like throwing a choice band on. You have 50% boost on uh, jaw moves. You know, crunch, vicious rend, the fang moves. You know, thunder fang, fire fang. So that's big. And yeah, that doesn't. I mean, that doesn't work if you're dynamaxed. So uh, those abilities are just they're just better in a non-max format, straight up. Another one, huge sheer force. Uh, we know some big users of it. Darmanitan, uh, Nido King, Nido Queen. Uh, yeah, Sheer Force gives you a 30% boost. You throw a Life Orb on, it's another 30%. That's a huge. Uh, yeah, that, that doesn't work with Dynamax because Dynamax moves aren't affected by Sheer Force. So the fact that, you know, Pokemon aren't maxing and getting that double bulk, and uh, instead you are staying unmaxed and you have a damage boost with your ability, Sheer Force, I mean, that's really, really powerful. So, uh, yeah, I think Sheer Force is, is really good here. Uh, another one, King Shield. It's kind of unique. Um, no one used Aegislash in the draft league I just played in, but um, I think it's interesting. We've seen it in, like, uh, VGC Series 10 in Sword and Shield uh, get used sometimes. Aegislash is a really interesting Pokemon. Uh, but yeah, it's got to use that King's Shield. I guess the ability is called Stance Change. That's a typo there. But uh, yeah, it's got to use King's Shield to switch its uh, stance. So I don't think Max Guard actually changes its stance. So it's not as good in Dynamax formats. Uh, but in non-Dynamax, it's a really interesting Pokemon. So hopefully somebody tries it this season. I think it could be really cool. Um, it's got a really interesting move pool. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a very unique Pokemon. Uh, Tough Claws, another one. Probably the most notable user is Lycanroc Dusk. Uh, it's got a really strong attack stat. It's like 117 or something like that. And with Tough Claws, a 20% boost for contact moves, like close combat. Um, it's got Excel Rock. That's a contact move priority. So uh, Tough Claws is another one. It's really strong. Again, doesn't work during max. So that's awesome. Uh, and I would encourage you guys to just check all of the mons that get these abilities because uh, there's obviously ones I'm leaving off this slide, but just check other mons that get these abilities and, and maybe think uh, if you can form like a draft plan around them or uh, if you can utilize them on your team because they're they're getting boosts that they previously weren't, uh, you know, 
if you uh, if you were maxing them. Uh, so yeah, Iron Fists, uh, big one. Conkelder, Mac or uh, Mac Punch, Drain Punch. Uh, gets other stuff like Ice Punch and whatnot. Iron Fist is just super super strong because um, uh, Conk has a huge attack stat too. So yeah, you're just getting a free. I think it's twenty percent boost. It might be thirty percent. I think it's twenty percent though. Twenty percent boost to your to your punching moves. Uh, yeah, that that's really cool. Uh, technician, I think a really cool one is Scyther. You get like Technician Dual Wing Beat, so it's uh, forty power, uh, but you get one point five, so it's actually sixty power. Um, so sixty power times two, it's one hundred and twenty power stab flying move. Whew, that's really good. Um, so yeah, Technician is really really cool. Uh, one point five power boost on those moves that are less than 60 base power or 60 or less uh and lastly we've got reckless so reckless hitmonlee high jump kick um uh, i mean that's already like what like 130 power plus reckless is i think another 20 percent boost that's huge um you can just start destroying things i mean that, that's that's like stronger than a max move actually so um yeah i mean and like i said there are other mons with these abilities check them out I think it's a really interesting thing that maybe people didn't think about um, during Dynamax because, you know, especially mons like Nido King, not super good in Dynamax because you're really you're really not going to want to Dynamax it that much because you, when you Dynamax it, it basically just has a useless ability now. So you're you're just losing out on its ability for three turns. Whereas if you stayed unmaxed, you'd get a thirty percent boost. So um, yeah, there's a lot of mons that I think went under the table uh, in those Dynamax formats that now. Uh, it's their time to shine. Um, so next, let's talk about flinching. Um, so you can't flinch, flinch Dynamax Pokemon. Um, so Fake Out really wasn't... I mean, still u really useful, but it wasn't as useful, I think, with Dynamax because you might just use a Fake Out into someone who Dynamaxes and now they can just blow you up with a max move. So it's, it's, it's a little bit riskier. Uh, but now... Fake out is a lot more useful. You know that nobody can max. Uh, it, it's always really free to fake out, uh, especially if you're faster. And um, so that, that that's, a, that's a big part, as we've already seen during Series 10. But in addition to that, flinching in general, you, you know, you can't flinch max mons, but you can flinch anybody now. So put one like with fast rock slides or like flinching moves, you know, uh, Moltres Galar, Fiery Wrath, spread move that can flinch. That's really cool. Um, and it's more useful because not only are you, uh, you know, using a strong move now, stab or something like that, you know, you get the opportunity to flinch. Whereas previously, if they were maxed, you had the, you, you, there was no opportunity to flinch them. Uh, and King's Rock too. You can use King's Rock, uh, if you want to, uh, it's obviously, it's not as common in BGC, I would say, but it's a, it's an interesting item. And, um, especially with fling, cause you can fling King's Rock and, that's basically like a one, like a one time fake out, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so those are some options. Uh, f so obviously, due to this fact that flinching and fake out is more common, um, that's a big reason why protect I think is a lot better now. Um, and max moves, you know, you they can't hit through protect, so um, protect is a lot better now because uh, and. If you wanted to max guard, you know, you, you might use a Trick Room setter, and Trick Room is your only status move. And so if you Dynamax, you can still max guard because you have Trick Room. But now, you know, you might not be able to just use, like, three moves in a status move. You know, it might have to be Protect now because it's, um, I think it's a better use of the move slot um, than it used to be because, um, yeah, I, I would, I, I, you know, Fake Out's more common. You, if they lead fake out, you're going to want to protect. If they switch it in later, um, just taking a hit and then uh, potentially doing nothing nothing that turn because you get faked out isn't just isn't worth it sometimes. So, uh, And yeah, because fake out's more common, uh, not only protect, but quick guard I think is more useful. Because especially in VGC, well, only in, you would never use it in singles, but in VGC you can, uh, you can quick guard protect your partner from fake out. So you don't necessarily need protect, I guess, if you have a fast quick guard user. Because quick guard and fake out are the same priority, plus three. So yeah, if you quick guard, uh, that's that that's going to be more useful now. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, and because of that, you know, you got you got uh, quick guard, you've got protect. Um, this opens up the opportunity to throw faint on faint removes protect or quick guard or wide guard. 
So um, Faint is actually more useful. And it actually creates a really weird mind game if you have a Pokemon with Fake Out and Faint because then uh, they can protect... They can double protect, you know, both their mons if you use Fake Out. But if they double protect and you use Faint, well, then you just get a free move on them. So it's a lot more free and create some interesting mind games. Um, wide Guard is also more useful just because um, when you Dynamax, like, you can't use a spread move, so it's not going to be as useful, but uh, now spread moves are going to be more common. And so Wide Guard is um, a, a lot more viable, I would say. Um, and it, it does also get neutralized by Faint. Faint lifts the effects of Wide Guard, but... Uh, Wide Guard's still, uh, still interesting um, for certain mons who have specific good spread moves. Some of these are obviously restricted, which you might not be playing with in draft, you know, like the Calyrexes or whatnot, but there are other mons who have really good spread moves, you know, Dragon Energy and whatnot, so um, it, it's still an option to, to think about um, in draft, I think. Um, other random moves that are just better outside of Dynamax. Weight moves. So Grass Knot, Heavy Slam, Heat Crash, they didn't work on Dynamax, but now they can. Um, some big heavy slam users, you know, Copperaja, Celesteela, those are some um, some good users of that. Um, fixed damage moves, so Nightshade, Seismic Toss, Super Fang, you know, they're going to do less to Dynamax, obviously, because they're double bulk. But now they'll um, they'll do a, a, a bigger percentage of uh, the opponent's health, essentially. So that's it's going to be more useful. Um, one hit KO moves, you they don't affect Dynamax Pokemon. But now you you can get a free you know knockout on somebody for well not free it's thirty percent chance to hit but uh, you definitely a lot a lot more viable to run especially in draft because in normal VGC you might not want to bring an Oko move to every single match but in draft you might have a specific matchup where you're facing somebody bulky and hey just throw on an Oko move why not I've done it. Um, Moves that are greater than 150 base power. Because when you Dynamax, the, 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 the highest power of a max move is 150 power. So Pokemon like uh, like, uh, so like Bolt Beak and Ficious Rend, those moves are doubled if you go first uh, against your target. So, you know, Dracovish, that's why Dracovish would never max. Because Ficious Rend is 85 power times 2. Um, you know, it's 170 base power. If you max, it's it's going to be 85, you know, it's going to be 130 power. So you actually get a higher power move if you don't max. Um, I mean, obviously it has strong jaw as well, but uh, an ex explosion, you know, explosion is uh, like 250 power, I think. And it's a uh, spread move. And it, yeah, it, it's so it's if you mat, if you dynamax explosion will only be 150 power um, max strike. So the other thing is big spread moves. So like Eruption, Water Spout, Dragon Energy. You know, you, you Dynamax, Eruption's going to be, I think, 150 power it, it, as a max move. But now, if, if you have full health, it's 150 power, but you're hitting both Pokemon. So it's just, you know, it, it has that spread multiplier, obviously, of 0.75, but it's going to be stronger. Um, it's going to do more damage in total to your opponent's team. So, so those are uh, better now. Uh, as we've seen Kyogre Water Spout do, like, amazing in uh, in Series 10. There are also some random support moves that didn't work on Max Mons. Disable, Torment, Encore, Destiny Bond. These are, I think, really interesting for certain situations, uh, especially in Draft. And so they just might be more um, moves that you normally would have not considered uh, in Dynamax formats, but now you might want to start thinking about using them because they're... Um, they're, they're more viable because um, you don't have to worry about Dynamax. Another interesting thing I think is fighting and poison moves. So some of these actually got weaker when you would Dynamax. So like Close Combat and Gunk Shot have a base power of 120. But if you max, uh, if you use a Close Combat when you Dynamax, it's I think it's like 95 power. Or if you use Gunk Shot, it might be like 95 or 90 power or something like that. So... Max Ooze and Max Knuckle actually were worse when you would use those. So it, it made it kind of awkward sometimes if you wanted to Dynamax uh, you know, fighting or poison Pokemon, really. Uh, they just, um, it, it, it wasn't as useful. I mean, obviously you get the boost the next turn, but initially it's not as useful. Um, 
The other thing is you wouldn't get the same damage increase if you're using coverage moves. So like consider Flamethrower and Sludge Bomb, they're both 90 base power, but if you, but a Max Flare is 130, whereas a Max Ooze is 90. So you're really getting gypped on that poison move. So like if you're trying to hit a, um, a Grass type, and they also, let's say, have a Fairy type, it's like, well, do I run, you know, Sludge Bomb? You know, in Dynamax, you know, you're only going to get 90 base power for the Max Ooze, but... Um, you know, if, if you have flamethrower, yeah, you can hit the uh, hit the grass type for 130 max flare now, whereas you would have only been able to hit the grass type for 90 max ooze. So it's just different, um, and uh, it just I think it makes poison moves a little bit more viable, um, specifically. Um, so I think that that's just something interesting. These some of these Pokemon might be a little bit better outside of that. Accuracy and evasion. I think that's a, uh, a big one um, because max moves ignore accuracy drops and evasion boosts. So those type of strategies are kind of risky if you're going for like lowering your opponent's accuracy or, or increasing your evasion. Um, the other thing is low accuracy moves were also guaranteed to hit as a max move. So, um, you know, if you ran like Hurricane or Hydro Pump or something like that, like you didn't have to worry about the accuracy of those moves. All you worried about was the base power and how much you were getting out of max. If you were, you know, pretty much always playing on maxing that mod or something like that. But now you have to, now you actually have to take actually into account for certain move sets. Um, you know, there are specific moves, items, and abilities that affect accuracy as well. So uh, any of these are going to be a little bit more useful now. Um, so moves like double team minimize, those are more viable strategies now because uh, they just, they can't just Dynamax and guarantee hit your Pokemon. They, you know, the, the accuracy and evasion checks actually matter. Uh, items, so like wide lens, zoom lens, bright powder. Um, you might not think of these as common VGC items, and, and they're not necessarily, but they're uh, in certain situations, you can consider them now. Whereas if you wanted to run bright powder, that's really not going to be as useful in a Dynamax format because they can just Dynamax, and then if they if they attack you, it, it, your item is doing nothing now because it's they, they are 100% guaranteed to hit you. Uh, whereas now they can never max, so the, your opponents always have a ninety percent chance to hit you. It's, it's always affecting them and their moves. Um, and like again with with wide lens and zoom lens, wide lens specifically with stuff like like triple axle, we've seen wide lens um, triple axle users like Serena or Revile before in, in C series ten. Um, that can be really really useful on those ninety percent moves. Um, and then abilities like snow cloak and sand veil. Um, they are obviously not as common as well, but uh, you might want to consider them for certain situations just because um, you might not need your other ability um, for, for Pokemon that have these abilities. Um, you might not need that ability that uh, that match. And, it, you know, having that extra extra accuracy boost, boost can sometimes save you. I mean, obviously these are like somewhat risky strategies, but it's every little bit can help. Uh, in the in in your matchups, um, another interesting thing is loss of coverage. This is this is actually pretty big um, because when you were considering Dynamax matchups, you all you have to do is scroll down on Cerebi to that max portion and just look. Okay, what max moves do they have? They have physical max flare. They have special max you know ooze whatever. You have to look at all the max options they have. It doesn't really matter what move was the basis for it. Um, besides the power, but uh, now it, it really does matter what specific move coverage they have. Um, so if you only have uh, one or two moves of a certain type, it might be awkward to use those outside of Dynamax, uh, resulting in essentially loss of coverage. Um, and, and I say it's especially noticeable with like ground and flying type moves. Um, and this is because I think there's a lot of mons that like only get fly or dig as their coverage. And so obviously, yeah, you can use that as Max Quake or Max Airstream, but it's you really it's really kind of risky, especially with how common Protect is. Because if you want to use Fly or Dig, well, your opponent can just Protect on every other turn and just you, you can never hit them. So it's not nearly as good um, if that's your only option. Um, and same thing, like Hurricane has low accuracy, like, like we just talked on the last slide. Um, Hurricane has low accuracy, so if that's your only move, like that's tough to run. So like some examples here I have is Landorus Therian. Only has flies, that's flying type move. Okay, well, 
Now, when you're thinking about Landorus matchups, you really don't have to consider its flying type stab as much because uh, it can't use fly unless it's you know using two turns. So um, that's a that's a huge difference because otherwise in Dynamax it could just max airstream, and just blow stuff up with its huge attack stat. Now it, you don't have to worry about that as much. Uh, Leafion only its dig is its only ground type move, physical ground type move. So. You know, if you're facing a Leafeon with a fire type, you really don't have to be scared of a Max Quake because you know that Leafeon will have to take two turns to use a dig. Um, Zapdos only has Hurricanes as a special flying type move. You know, it could throw off huge Max Airstreams and Dynamax, but now it only has, uh, it can only run Hurricane, and, and without rain, it's a 70% accurate move. I mean, obviously, people can run it, and it, 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 it's just more risky now, essentially, to run. Um, so you just have to take that into consideration. Choice items. Choice items, um, so none of these worked when you Dynamax. If you Dynamax, you lose, I mean, you're not locked into a move, but you lose any sort of boost, the scarf, the specs, the, um, band. So, and, but the other thing is, without the extra bulk from Dynamax, choice specs and choice band are much more likely to pick up one-hit KOs. Um, so... That's and, and that's I feel like that's usually what you want to do when you have a choice item is you want to pick up that one hit KO because you're locked in that move and, and opponents know that now and um, yeah so choice scarf is also a nice way to catch up opponents off guard uh, they can't just match your speed increase with like max airstreams or lower your speed with max strikes um, so a choice scarf is a really really nice um, option as well um, you can also do like a strong move with choice scarf you know like a, like a choice scarf water spout we've seen on Kyogre. Um, it, 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 you're more likely to pick up one-hit KOs um, with those choice items, uh, and, and they'll catch your opponent off guard. Um, so I think I think th they're something that you definitely want to consider um, in a non-max format, more so. Weather and terrain. This is a big one. So weather and terrain uh, cannot be easily overwritten by a max move. Uh, you know, before, if you were facing a Sun team, you know, the Venusaur... You just, you know, you max Geyser that Torkoal, and all of a sudden now it's rainy, and that Venusaur doesn't have chlorophyll. Easy peasy. Uh, but now, um, you can't just do that. You can't override it with a max move, you know. you It, it makes weather and terrain setters more valuable because um, it's harder to override them. You actually have to waste a, a, a move slot specifically on, like, a, a, a status move, like Sunny Day or Grassy Terrain or something like that to change those uh, the weather or terrain. Um, so in my opinion, it's a lot easier to justify teching on a weather move like Sunny Day or Rain Dance um, to, to change the weather rather than a terrain move. Um, I mean, there, there definitely are, are situations where you might want to use a terrain move, but um, in my experience, it just seemed like it was a lot easier to justify running those weather moves than the terrain moves. So the, in my opinion, terrain setters are, are slightly more valuable than the weather setters. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that's a really cool feature of the of this non-max format as well. Stalling, stalling, um, you can definitely do it with Dynamax, um, but I think it's a little more viable now. Uh, max moves, you know, grant that immediate offensive pressure. They boost your uh, abilities, and if you also if you go for max knuckles or max oozes, you, you're going to boost your stats, and and it's going to be easier to wall break, right? If they're trying to stall, um, but uh, so, so strategies um, revolving around stalling are going to be harder to break now because you're going you you can't just Dynamax and start pummeling them. Um, the the but but on the flip side, it will be harder to get those defensive boosts for the the, the team that's stalling because they, they can't just max Quake three times and have three special defense boosts. You know, they're going to have to have a, a special defense boosting move like Calm Mind or Amnesia. Um, and the same thing with Steel Spike. You know, you're going to have to have like Iron Defense or something like that to actually boost. And so it is a little bit harder to, to get those boosts because you're limited by your move pool. Um, but if you do get those boosts off, it can be really hard to break through your wall because um, without Dynamax, there's just so much less power. Um, general gimmicks that are less useful in Dynamax are um, stuff like weakness policy. 
Um, weakness policy is really, really common in max formats. Um, and because you you just want to give your max Pokemon as much power and just, you know, throw it at your opponent and just take out as many moms as possible during your three-turn Dynamax. Uh, but, nah, but it's harder to get long-term value from those boosts because with Dynamax, you get that increased bulk and you'd have three full turns of using, you know, double attack or special attack. Now, uh, you know, you proc your own weakness policy and you might take 30% of your health. Um, whereas before you might only take like 10% or 15%. So of your Dynamax health. So now you, you, you know, you, you, you do self ice shard, self shadow sneak, whatever it is, you might take 30% and throw off a move. And then your opponent just kills you with their other Pokemon who survived. So it's weakness policy is just a lot riskier, I would say in this format, um, in general, especially self proccing. Trick Eject Button, that was a really common one too to, to swap out Dynamax. That's obviously not going to be as useful um, because it, it really, the goal was just preventing your opponent from getting those three turns of Dynamax. Now there's no sort of gimmick Dynamax or, you know, or anything like that. Um, so it's, you know, there's not going to be a situation where you're like, oh, I need to get this Pokemon out of here um, right now because what do you, all you're doing is switching them out. You're not wasting anything. Um, you know, switching Pokemon out really wasn't the point of Trick Eject Button. I mean, it was, but it was really just, oh, you don't have your Dynamax anymore because you only get once per game. Um, Copycat Trick Room was another interesting thing, specifically with Lipard and Riolu, um, where you could Max Guard and you have Trick Room as the Max Guard move, and, it, and then you Copycat and you set Trick Room immediately. So it was kind of a free way to get up Trick Room with Prankster, um, and then your Sweeper could just capitalize on it. But um, that only worked... Um, with that specific mechanic, since Max Guard, um, you would copycat the move that Max Guard was using, but you can't do that anymore. So uh, those strategies aren't as useful either. Um, so yeah, that's just a lot of uh, the thoughts I had on non-Dynamax leagues. Thing to consider when you're drafting, things to look into. Um, there are obviously a lot more um, uh, little mechanics and stuff that that are going to be affected uh couldn't go into everything but this is just a general kind of broad uh guideline of things to think about um so if you guys like this or enjoy it let me know um i think it's an interesting uh thing to think about and this the, the, the non-max league i just played in uh vdl uh was really really fun made playoffs but couldn't get to the end and hopefully I'll do better this season. But it was uh, it was a fun learning experience, and I'm hoping everybody else does better as well. It should be fun. See ya.